to the newest episode of Spitball and Sports. I'm John. There's Scott. How's it going, Scott? What's up, brother? Good, man. How are you? I'm all right. All right. Uh, nice break. You Robin? Oh, yeah. Robin's here. It's Scott. <laughs> Hi, Robin. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're sitting right here. I, no respect at all. <laughs> wow. Um, anyhow, just get back. What do you do? What you're doing? Come on. Oh, my God. Always something, man. Anyhow, let me get get back on track. I told you, I get I get sidetracked really easy. I don't know if it's old age or what, man. Scott, anything happens, I don't know what to. I'm all like all over. I get scattered, I, frazzled. Yeah, thank God I'm not like I would be t- time management. Oh my, they'd fire. I'd be fired. I'm I'd be word. fumbling. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's you know the NHL season is like. A lot of teams have three games left, four games left. So playoffs are right around the corner. I mean, right here, they start April 17th. And um, we know a lot of the matchups. Some of them we don't, but we're going to talk to someone who's a good friend of the show. Um, you guys know him. He, a member of the Pro Hockey Writers of America, reporter for Hockey Buzz. He's a co-host of Off the Podcast Radio and Leafs Convo, if you're a Leafs fan. The Off the Post Radio is a really good show if you like the NHL. Um, he's a writer for Full Press, and on Twitter, he does a good post game. If you're a Leafs fan on Twitter, it's really, really good. I, I enjoy it. It's like an old school one. It's really cool. And he is our friend and guest, Mike Ajello. There he is. I, I want more of a build up. Come on. I know. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I'm like Don King. Oh, good. Yeah. No. Like, Thank like you, for being with you. you know, there's fireworks everywhere. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, this background's driving me crazy, guys. I'm hopping out. I'm hopping right back in. That's fine. Yeah, no problem. Guys. I knew it was going to. I knew. <laughs> anyway, hey, what's up, Mike? How you doing? Um, no, no complaints. Anxiously awaiting the next. Uh, 10 days to get past so we can get to the real season after 82 games of, you know, consequential, but now, now it's the point where, you know, you just want to get to the matchups and get to the playoffs, which when the real fun begins. Yeah. I can't wait to, um, we're going to talk about the Leafs with you shortly. Right. I, I, that's, I can't wait for that series, but we'll talk about that. Scott will be back with us in a minute. I wanted to ask you, um, mm-hmm. The Atlantic, the the Metro, the East. The wild card is awfully close. I think I got it here if I can find it. For yeah, Florida and the Islanders tied at eighty nine. Pittsburgh at eighty eight. Yes, and you got the Sabers still, I guess, hanging around. Yeah, they're mathematically eliminated or mathematically still in it, but they really eliminated themselves when they uh, lost to Florida. Yeah. Uh, that was a game they needed to win in regulation to really stay in it, and they didn't. And, you know, I mean, they're, they've had a great season, um, but I think the flaws of the Sabres are showing. And, uh, you know, uh, I, mean, I don't know how much you want to get into that, but, uh, you know, Devin Levi is a great young goaltender, but if they go into next season with him as the starting goaltender, they're a dumb organization. I think that's what I told you, Scott, yeah. earlier. HL. Yeah, he should be in the American Hockey League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but that would that would necessitate them trading or signing a goaltender, and you know, their I think their plan is maybe one. You know, the plan should be one to two years with Levi and the minors to get experience and give your team time to improve defensively. But they're so anxious to have a goaltender who can stop a puck that they may force feed it. And I, I, I just, honestly, he could be a very good goaltender, but if you force him and, and I mean, they gave up six goals against Detroit, that's more like what it's going to be next year, unless they improve dramatically on defense. Yeah. Can you kind of hang them out to dry? I mean, it would be, it would be tough. We've seen that before. We, we definitely yeah. have, seen, we, we've seen that many times. Oh, um, yeah. Toronto, yes. Do you think, I'm going to say real quick on Buffalo, because then we'll go on the other things. And if Scott, you got something too because I, I know we got a lot of people that watch from here um do they is there are they handcuffed is is the pagulas handcuffing them to where they can't spend like is that happening or no or do you i don't know because it's weird because i thought they would do something at the deadline they don't they fall in love with their draft picks maybe but you, i, I want to hear what you think of them 
Well, they're not. It, it's not like they're being cheap. They they've signed Tage Thompson to a long term extension. They signed Dylan Cousins to a long term extension. They signed Matias Samuelson. Yeah. Uh, so they they've spent the money and locked up their players long term, <clears throat> where I think they're sort of cheaping out in a way is at the deadline. I think if you added a goaltender, you didn't have to give up a ton for a guy like Corpus Allo. Now, you know, uh, the, the uh, blue jackets ended up trading Corpus Allo and uh, Gavrikov in the same deal and got a couple high draft picks. There were other goaltenders out there, James, you know, James Reimer and San Jose, a few other, a few other guys. And that would have been an upgrade over Craig Anderson and uh, and Lukanen and Comrie. You don't know. I mean, right now they're six points out of a playoff spot. If they would have won one or two games but after – because they lost, I think, eight of ten after the deadline, they could be in this race. But they didn't. They went and traded for, J- for uh, uh, Jordan Greenway, who I like. I think it was a good acquisition. But they really needed to get a goaltender to have a chance to make the playoffs. And I think it would have been invaluable for this young team to get into the postseason, even if they would have gotten hammered by Boston or Carolina, to get into the playoffs and to taste that that experience would have been invaluable for a young team. But they didn't do it. Um, I think it's a must for them in the summer to get a goaltender. And if they don't, I think this is going to be just a repeat of this year where Lukanen gave away games and their defense and the team defense gave away games. Could it be, could it possibly be a matter of good goaltenders just not wanting to play for Buffalo? Well, I mean, in terms of free agency, maybe. I mean, uh, you know, when, when you're talking to free agents, it's how much term you're going to give them and how much money you're going to give them. Um, I, like, I would have gone after Billy Huso, uh, who was now with Detroit in, in the offseason. And he, I think he signed a three-year deal with Detroit. It wasn't for big money. But, you know, all the talking points from the offseason going forward were, well, we don't want to bro- block – Devin the road for Devin Levi and I'm like that makes sense in the sense of you have to get him signed and if all of a sudden you get a veteran goaltender who's going to be there for two or three years then Levi could say well you know I'm gonna I'm gonna go free agent after next year and and he can do that as a college player so they wanted to keep the road clear for Levi in terms of uh, you know, not have putting a veteran in front of him, but now that he's locked up on a contract, I'm sorry, the best case, the best course for the Sabres is to get a veteran goaltender to play either with Lukanen or with Levi at the NHL level, have a little bit of a safety net. And I think that would be the, the best course. They, they're loaded with prospects. They're loaded with draft picks. They can do it. Um, but it's a question of whether Kevin Adams and the hierarchy of the Sabres want to do it. Mike, um, now on, on to this. Uh, my big first question is: Can Flor? Can any one of Florida, New York Islanders, or Pittsburgh beat the Bruins? You think in the first round? Um, I think in a perfect world they could, but I mean, you know, Boston's going to be heavily favored. I saw them. You know, we both saw them play the Leafs on Thursday, and. You know, Boston was without Krejci. They were without McAvoy. They were without Taylor Hall, and they still won an overtime. And the Leafs played a really good game. Um, it's going to be a tough, uh, a tough road to hoe for any one of those teams. I think the Islanders, even though I think the Islanders have the best chance of missing the playoffs, I think the way that they play defense and they're physical, um, they would have the best chance against the Bruins because they have Sorokin. And Sorokin is, I think, one of the best two or three goaltenders in the league. And if Sorokin got hot, he could he could frustrate the Bruins. And then the pressure is all – I mean, the pressure is on Boston. They, they've, you know, they may have the best record in the NHL since the 76-77 Canadians. And if that happens, then everybody's going to be picking them to, to win the Stanley Cup. And with that expectation comes a lot of pressure. So – you know, if the right thing happens, remember a few years ago when Tampa lost to Columbus, I mean, yeah. as if, 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 uh, you know, Columbus wins game one, then all the pressures that pressures on Tampa, and then it just keeps building and building. If that happens, any, anything is possible, but there'll be, they will be heavily favored. If, um, does any of it with them, they're, they're weird to me, the Bruins. I don't know what it is. They just don't. And that's, and it's not my hatred of them being a Leafs fan. It really isn't. It's just that, <laughs> 
I don't see it like Marshawn's doing. He's he's kind of missing in action. And I'm going to give my negatives, and then you. I want to hear from you. All Mark sure. hasn't played. Did he play a play? He's played a couple playoff games, I think, in his career. Yeah. There are things there, right? When you say Mike, there's kind of like little things in the armor that might say this isn't as good as it appears. I mean, 127 yeah. points, but. Well, I mean, you know, they're definitely imperfections. Yeah, yes, Marchand has struggled this year. I think they said on the broadcast yesterday that he had scored one goal in the last 18 games. That's not Mar- that, that's not typical Marchand. Uh, you know, but you know, Bergeron is playing great and Krejci is playing great. They're getting good years out of Taylor Hall uh, and and uh, DeBrusque. You know, they added. Uh, they, they they added Tyler Bertuzzi at the deadline and Orloff. I mean, they're physical. Their de- defense is deep. Um, yes, I mean, I think the one thing that might be a chink in their armor is the sense that uh, Omar doesn't have a lot of experience and neither does Swayman. So, you know, could you get out goaltended in a series? It's possible. But they're so they're so deep that, I mean, I think I think they'll at least get through the first round, and depending on who they play, Tampa or Toronto. I mean, that'll be a tough matchup for them. But I, I, you know, like personally, I think they're I think they're the one. Either them or the Rangers are coming out of the East. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, and like anything can happen in this game. I mean, the top seed in the conference can lose in a seven game series. It just happens. The Hurricanes. How's our guy Freddie Anderson doing? Will he be the starter? Game one. That's a cool. I mean, he's healthy, so right now you would think that they would lean toward him, but he hadn't been playing particularly well. And uh, Kochetkov, the young goaltender that they have, who is the goalie of the future there, he's played fairly well down the stretch. So that's up to Rob Brindamore. I mean, I I think it's you know they're going to play whoever the first wild card is, and that could be Islanders, Pittsburgh, Florida. Um, those teams have a better chance of beating Carolina than they have of beating Boston because Carolina, I think, is limited offensively because of the injuries to Fe- Svechnikov and to uh, 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 Max Pacioretty. Uh, and I think there are questions in goal. I mean, Anderson, if he's healthy, then the thing you, that we're well aware of following the, the Leafs is – you know, his collar gets a little tight when it comes to the postseason. So he's got a lot of things to sort of shake off. Can he do it? I think he can, but until we see it happening, then, you know, we, we won't know. We're here with Mike uh, Jello from Hockey Buzz, Off the Post Radio, Leafs Combo, Full Press, he writes for Pro Hockey uh, Writers of America, our friend Mike Jello. Um, I want to ask you now, let, let's switch to the West real quick on that, because then we're going to go back to the Leafs and Lightning. Um, in the West, let me bring up the wild card for the people at home. There's what we have. The Kraken have, for the first time ever, are going to be in the playoffs. And then there, look at that Winnipeg, Calgary, and Nashville. What a good game the other night. I love watching Winnipeg play Calgary. They seem like the same team to me. I don't know why. They seem almost mirror images. Who, who makes it there, Mike? Who do you think is... Uh, makes that last wild card spot well i keep saying that nashville's gonna drop out because i mean they trade they you know they traded away Juno, they they traded at home and they keep winning you know like uh they lost matt duchene i don't know if he's back but they lost matt duchene to a hand injury and they keep winning they're getting great goaltending out of Saros, and they you know they keep staying in this race and i mean right now they have a game in hand on calgary uh, they're the same game number of games against Winnipeg. They're out behind by a point. So, uh, I mean, anything is possible. I would think that Calgary or Winnipeg would get that second wild card spot. But I've been I've been writing off Nashville for two weeks, and they they're just they're they just won't go away. So, anything is possible. Big game for them too. Saturday they're at Winnipeg. That's going to be a, a yeah. huge game for for Nashville and Winnipeg. Winnipeg to me. I don't know. Winnipeg and Calgary are just the biggest disappointments. I I really – they got the goaltending. I don't know. Markstrom really fell back. He's playing a little better now. But do you feel their disappointments? I mean, to me, I feel very disappointed in those two. Well, with Calgary, all the changes that were forced upon them uh, and that they made themselves with trading uh, Matthew Kachuk to Florida – uh, losing Goudreau in, in free agency, replacing them with Huberto and Kadri. Um, you know, that's th- that's major surgery. So that really upended them. And I'm sure that there's a settling in period for those players. 
Um, you know, there's been it's their season's been up and down. They've they've had long winning streaks. They've had long streaks where they're just been they haven't known what the hell they're doing. Winnipeg was in first place, and they've sort of like run out of gas. And uh, you know, I think they have the best goaltending of the three teams. Although Saros has played fantastic, but Hullabuck has not been able to steal games lately. And you know. Their big players are just not coming through. Shifley and Wheeler and Dubois, they're not carrying uh, carrying that team to a playoff spot. And right now, I mean, three, four games left. I mean, it's anybody's race, really. I'm curious if uh, the coaches are on on the hot seat, both of them. Um, I don't know. It feels like Sutter wears out his welcome, but it's hard to say. I know they love him there or something, the ownership, I guess. Well, I mean, he signed a long-term extension, but if he misses the playoffs, then you'd have to think that, you know, it's possible that he could he could retire. I mean, Brad, for a living, their GM, they really didn't do anything with the deadline, and his contract is up. So, you know, there could be a change in management, and, and when a general manager, new general manager comes in, he might want his own coach. So you don't know what's going to happen there. Rick Bonus just got hired in Winnipeg, so I don't think he's in danger. But if they miss the playoffs, you know, Kevin Shevel Day off their longtime general manager, he might be in trouble. I don't think Nash I don't think anything is gonna happen in Nashville because like I said, they're overachieving right now. David Poyle has already announced his retirement. Barry Trotz is coming in as the GM. Um, and John Hines is pulling out wins, so I can't see them moving on from him. So yeah, the only one that I think there's a legitimate chance of a coaching change is probably Calgary. Do you think any one of those teams, Seattle, Winnipeg, Calgary, or Nashville, can they upset? I, I think right now it'd be what Colorado, it could be Colorado or Dallas, Las Vegas. Could they upset any of them teams, you think? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say, we don't know who's going to win the Central. So, yeah. um, you know, I think I think Winnipeg could beat one of those teams, if, you know, because they played them so often. They, you know, and again, same philosophy with Sorokin and the Islanders. Hellebuck can steal a series. So, it's possible depending on the right. Like if Colorado finishes in first place, then I, and they're healthy, then I don't think they, they're going to lose to any one of those teams. If it's Minnesota or Dallas, if it's Vegas uh, in the, in the uh, Pacific, then they might have a chance. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I'd find it hard to believe that Seattle would win a series uh, against anybody, not because, you know, it's been an achievement for them to get into the playoffs, but there are holes in that roster. And I don't know whether they can best a, a team like a Colorado or a team like Vegas. Now, Edmonton is about three points back from Vegas. Um, I was looking at them. I mean, they, is Edmonton in your mind, are they going to, do they go a couple rounds? Do you think they make it to the conference final or they make it out of that division? I should say. I'm the wrong person to ask because I hate Edmonton. And I mean, that's saying, you know, you know personally, but, they've, <laughs> but I did, but I just, I, I, you know, I don't like the way that franchise has been run the last few years. I think they've made some bad decisions in terms of signings like Jack Campbell, giving Jack Campbell a five-year deal of 5 million, I think was asinine when, you know, Stuart Skinner is probably going to be the goaltender in the playoffs. They did make a nice deal for at home and they have finally, finally after what, five or six years, added around two of the best forwards in the league and McDavid and Dreisaitl. But I still don't think they're good enough defensively. I know they've been hot, and I know that Ekholm has improved them as a, in terms of being a matchup defender, and he can shut down, help shut down another team's number one line. Uh, I think L.A. is a bad matchup for them. Like they, L.A. played them last year. Uh, L.A. took them to seven games and then lost. LA has two of the best defensive centers in the league in Kopitar and Deno. They can, you know, nobody can shut down McDavid and dry settle, but they might be able to limit them enough for LA to be able to win. Uh, as long as they keep getting the good goal then they got it out of Corpus Allo, but they have some defensive questions as well. So um, I, I don't think Edmonton gets out of the division. If they beat LA, I think Vegas can beat them. Um, but, you know, like I said, I'm biased. I, I'm hoping that they don't make it out because uh, I just, you know, I don't like them as a franchise, and I, I, I'm not going to root for them. Cody Cece's still in their top six, right? Oh yeah. Or, oh yeah, yeah. That's something. Oh, oh, every I, time I see him, I, I'm stunned when I see. Well, 
I don't know what it is. <laughs> I'd love like to have his longevity. His longevity with average talent is is fairly incredible. Scott, I don't mean to be hogging everything, so jump in whenever you like. You're fine, man. Right. Well, we're going to get to what I dogs that are eating things they're not supposed to. <laughs> at my feet, trying to grab one dog, but I've just been yeah. muted the whole time, so none of this would disturb anything that's going on. Apologize. Right. Let's get to the to the. Some like, of my questions were already answered because you asked them. So okay, cool. Let's get to the series that I want to talk to you about, uh, Mike. It's the Leafs and the Lightning. We know Toronto um, clinched home ice last night in that 2-1 loss where I thought they played well. Um, Tampa seems to be turning it on here now. I know they got some injuries. I'd like to hear about them if you know anything about those injuries from last night. Right. And um, let's just give you give me your overall thoughts on this series because I just want to hear from you before I say anything. What do you think? Well, I know that the prevailing opinion right now for people outside of Toronto is that Toronto should be favored in the series. The Toronto is as strong as these, as they've ever been. Um, I agree with the fact that they're stronger than they've been in previous years. Their defense is much better. Their forwards, I think with the addition of Ryan O'Reilly and now you've got Matthews, Tavares and O'Reilly up the middle. That's the deeper and more talented than they've ever been up the middle. Um, you know, they've got their, the core group, their power play has been pretty decent, uh, this season and consistent. Uh, they I think their goaltending is much better than it was yeah. last year with, uh, Samson off and, and Murray until he got hurt again. Uh, as opposed to Jack Campbell and Shawgren was in the playoffs. All that being said, um, my philosophy is show me because Tampa Bay is got championship pedigree. They've won two Stanley Cups. They've been to three Stanley Cup finals. They seem to be able to turn it on when they need to. And they have, you know, they've got Stamkos and Kucherov and Point and Hedman and Vasilevsky. The Leafs don't have a defense, a number one defenseman as good as Hedman. They don't have a goaltender as good as Vasilevsky. Uh, if, they're, if their core group shows up, they're probably at the equal of Stamkos and Point and Kucherov, but they have won championships and the Leafs have not. So when you couch it that way, I think Tampa should be favored. They're the ones who have, you know, did, the yeah. success, success in the playoffs. But if you ask, if you ask people with betting lines, or if you ask, well, it's inevitable that the Leafs, will, no, nothing is inevitable. And this team is lost in the, in the first round of the playoffs six years in a row. So until they can prove that they can win, I'm going to say, show me. I'm from Missouri. Show me. Yeah. Now, I, let me ask you, last night during the Leafs game, and I saw it when they gave up the tying goal, mm -hmm. I happened to hear that Justin Bourne talking about it. So I wanted to ask you about it. Um there was a point where Luke Shen tries to clear it out off the, off the glass, which called jumps up, makes the play. Yep. What? And I had to agree with him. And I said it last night when I was sitting here, why were the, the players on the ice that were on the ice at that point? And um, I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Cause I know you watched the game close. I right. thought it was odd that Matthew Stamco, uh, Stamco, so yeah, Matthews, uh, Tavares and Nylander were out there at that point. Is there, right. a, is, are they getting out coached sometimes you think? Well, and I'm pretty sure that was after a Leafs PK. It was. Because norm normally what they do when – and you got to remember the, the, the uh, construction of their penalty kill. Uh, usually it's Marner and Camp, you know, guys like O'Reilly and Yarn Croak. And the skilled players like Tavares, Matthews, Nylander are not part of the penalty killing group. So when they've killed a penalty, the first line that, lineup that they usually put out there – is that group because you want to get maximize, uh, you know, their ice time and take advantage of the uh, other team when they've not cashed in on the penalty kill. Now, should, you know, like I know that they pointed out, you know, Shen's clearing attempt was in, was intercepted. It was a great play by Carlo. He jumped up and caught the puck <laughs> off the glass, you know, barely kept it in and then fed, Charlie Coyle for the tying goal. Morgan Riley was sort of caught a little bit out of position, but it was a great play. So I can't really fault 
you know, I know that, you know, Justin Bourne, he's, he provides really good analysis, but sometimes I, sometimes I think they're a little overcritical and, and sort of micro analyzing things. It was a good play by a Carlo. It was a, it was a great shot by Coyle. I, I don't, I don't hold any blame there. Now there are other situations like in that Columbus game uh, on Tuesday where, you know, Justin Hall gets caught flat footed in the yeah. third period uh, and Eric Robinson blows by him like he's standing still and they score late in the third period to make a three to two. That is a fault of a player who is just not, he shouldn't be in the lineup, but he's a he's a he's a favorite of Sheldon Keefe, and more than likely, when they're starting six defensemen in Game One of the Stanley Cup of the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs, Justin Hall is going to be part of that starting six, and I don't think he should, but he's probably going to be. Does Shen? Do you think? Is he? Yeah. Oh, he has, game one. The whole reason that they acquired Luke Shen was to play against Tampa, and it, you saw the game. Uh, on Wednesday when Tampa played against the Rangers at MSG and the physicality and the, you know, not goonery, but, you know, but, you know, the physicality that they showed uh, against like Jacob Truba and against the goal against Shesterkin uh, and they were stirring it up. Uh, they need a counterpoint to those guys, a, a sheriff who basically say, okay, you know, you can't pull this crap. And, you know, you got Achari, who's a hitter. You've got a few guys who can drop the gloves if needs be. Um, they they need Shen in the lineup. He's one of the only really physical players that they have. And the whole reason that they traded for him was to play him against Tampa. Now, you you mentioned Tampa before and the injuries. Yeah. Um, against the Rangers, they lost uh, Anthony Sorelli and they lost Brandon Hagel. They said, now, the report is day-to-day. We don't know. This close to the playoffs, these teams are going to be very foggy when it comes to details about injuries. So it could be day-to-day, and they could be back for game one of the playoffs. It could be something more serious, and they're just trying to sort of hide hide that fact. There's no hiding what happened to Tanner Janot against the Islanders yesterday. I would be shocked if he plays in the first round. It looked like either he broke – uh, a, a tibia uh, or sorry, a fibula, or it's a, or it's a high ankle sprain. And if it's a high ankle sprain, you know, if he, even if he, if he plays and they shoot him up and they play, you know, he's not going to be 50% of what he normally is. So, I mean, I think that's, it. I, I'd be shocked if he plays in the playoffs, but I, I've seen players like that fall on their, on their leg before and then play. So anything is possible when it comes to the playoffs. Before I let you go, um, two things I want to do first before I let you go. First, um, Can I ask oh, Robin, you want to ask a question? Sure. Robin here wants to ask you a question. She's off camera. Go ahead, Robin. Mike, what do you think about Sheldon Keith uh, doing 11 and 7 as opposed to 12 and 6 in the playoffs? He's been do- using 11 and 7 during the regular season um, because they have nine defensemen and because they want all these defensemen to play and be sharp they've been rotating uh a number of their defensemen they've been giving giordano a day off they've been giving a couple of other players a day off and they're getting different looks with different pairings uh i think that's to prepare them because in the playoffs there's always mixing and matching of, of pairings you know tj brody played with justin hall one shift then he plays with morgan riley it's sort of getting you and you've had a couple new defensemen added to the mix. So I think it was more to get familiarity with the players that came in uh, with the players that are already, already there. I think when the playoffs come around, it's going to be 12, six, I'd be shocked if it's 11, seven. Um, and, you know, like I said, I, I personally would have Timothy Lilligren in the lineup rather than Justin Hall. And, you know, when Hall gives away the puck in a playoff game, then maybe they'll put Lilligren in. But uh, I think I, I think they're going to go with 12 forwards and six defensemen. Do you – um last one, and then I want a prediction. That's all. Um, these games coming up, Samson not play one maybe of the next four? I mean, I can't see him playing in Tampa. I'd be shocked. Well, okay, I – I would think since he played in Boston that Wall is going to play on uh, on Saturday against Montreal. Then it's Monday, Tuesday, back to back Florida, Tampa. They'll split the goaltenders, so probably Samsonov against Florida and Wall against Tampa, and then 
maybe Samson off in the final game against the Rangers because then they won't have played for four days before the playoffs. They want to have him play the last game just to keep him sharp. Um, if Matt Murray comes back and we don't know the status, you know, they've been very foggy on his status. They said day to day with a head injury, um, you know, then that changes up things a little bit. Um, I think they're going to be careful with them. I think ideally they want Murray backing up Samson off when, when the playoffs come around because, you know, he's a guy they, that's won two Stanley Cups. And if Samson off falters or gets hurt, then, you know, they want Murray in there rather than a raw rookie in, in Wall who's played, I think, nine NHL regular season games. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think they'll split it about them maybe three to two uh, with Wall getting a couple starts and Samson off getting three. All right. So you got that. You said the Rangers and Bruins, you think, are the ones that will come out of the East. Who comes out yeah. of the West? A couple that come out of the West. Who do you think comes out of there? Um, out of the West, um, I mean, right now, that central division who finishes first place is going to be a big advantage. And right now, Colorado and Dallas are tied. Whoever gets first place in the central, I think is coming out of the, coming out of the West. I like Dallas because they have Ottinger. He's a really good goaltender and they've had a great year, but if they have to play Minnesota in the first round and then go through Colorado, then that's really a tough road to hoe. If Colorado gets first place, I think they're I think they're going to not repeat as Stanley Cup champions, but repeat as Western Conference champions. But if Dallas uh, if Dallas wins the Central, uh, like a Dallas Vegas Conference Final will be really tough. But I think I think the winner of the Central is coming out of the West. Oh, great! All right, Mike. I'm sorry I held you long. I always tell you 20 minutes, you stay 30. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> okay. it. Um, I, I talk too much. I know. Last thing, I can't get this out of my head. I'm I'm nervous. I got my Leaf jersey on. I'm I'm all shook up. Um, yes. What do you think? Is it just fifty fifty? They're the better team this year. I know we got to see it, but they really should be. Uh, I know. I, I'm sorry. It's like <laughs> un, until I see them win, I, I I'm picking Tampa. I will pick Tampa in seven games, and I hope they prove me wrong. But. You know, I have been, I picked against the Leafs for six straight years and this will be seven and I've been right six times. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, by the way, um, so I, I see Scotty wearing the Bills hat. Uh, oh. I'm, I'm thinking they're going to draft a linebacker with their first round pick. Did you see what came out today? No, Did I, you hear this? I just saw this come out a little while ago uh, that <clears throat> it's been getting, and this is from, not like just people posting it on Twitter that have a blue check mark that they might have paid for. Right. It said that Buffalo's looking to move up from pick 27 for either a skill position player or offensive lineman. So, well, if it's a skill position player, it, that's it's got a wide receiver, player. right? It's got to be a wide receiver. I can't I wonder who they would move up to for Zay. Well, Man, they might I mean, be targeting Zay Flowers possibly. Yeah, I mean, if they're talking about moving up so they take B. John Robinson, that's, that's asinine. It's it's, like, uh, dude, the fan, fan base will lose their shit. I know. We're, we're covered at running back. They don't need to do anything there. Yeah, no. I, I mean, if they, the sixth round or something. If that's the case and they think they, they can move up five or six slots to get the wide receiver that they want, then, you know, that, that makes sense. About. Yeah, I mean, I don't know which one. I mean, there's so many receivers in this draft that they might. They that there's been rumor that they've been interested in. The, they may uh, even go after a quality, uh, uh, staple offensive lineman that's going to be there for his career. I mean, they 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 could. I don't know because they haven't done that in a while. I mean, since Deion Dawkins, he was the highest pick with the first round pick, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, when whenever they've moved up in the top of the draft to draft an offensive lineman. I know. Cody Ford. Williams. Remember back in the Williams days? Yeah. I mean, it's a, but, but I'm talking about in the, in the, in the bean, the bean era. era, they've not had great, you know, like I, I, I like Spencer Brown, but he gets hurt too much. And Cody Ford was a complete and utter bust. You know, they've done better in terms of signing free agents and plugging holes than they have in drafting offensive linemen. So, you know, maybe that changes, but I, I think, you know, if they're going to, you know, either you address need and draft, I think it was Jack, and the, Jack Campbell was the, is the, uh, the, the, the uh, Iowa uh, linebacker that was rumored to be somebody that they might be interested in, but it might be a reach at their pick in the first round. I, I, I was going to say he's like slated for second round. Right. I mean, then what they might do is trade out of the first and, and get an extra pick sure. because they have they have holes to fill. But 
I, I, I think it's got to be a wide receiver. I, you know, they, okay. they go, if they're not getting Beckham and they're not trading for uh, DeAndre Hopkins, then then I, I think they have to draft a wide receiver. Yeah, I think that Hopkins situation is going to drag out because he's his own agent. Um, yeah. So, well, so is Lamar Jackson. I didn't know. I didn't know Hopkins was. Yeah, Hopkins is. Yeah. So I mean, and, and the rumor is is that he's willing to. Uh, adjust his contract to, to make a deal happen, but apparently the the the, uh, the Cardinals are asking for a second round pick. And after Brandon Brandon Cooks goes to Dallas for a fifth and a sixth, yeah. no, there's no way I'm trading a second. And what, yeah, and what the Bills might be doing is like waiting to the fourth round and going to Arizona and says, okay, we'll trade you the fourth for him. And I heard they might even cut him. Well, if they do, then then he's, then he's free to negotiate. And 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 I, I mean, I think the Beckham thing would have happened already. Had uh, something's not right there. Yeah, supposedly he's interested in going to the Jets because and it would have happened somewhere. I don't yeah. know why you'd even want. I don't know why anyone even want him. Out right? there, if he was completely healthy and ready to go. And I don't know why he shopped himself as though he was, because that's kind of pretty shitty too. He drummed up a hell of a lot of media and all that, and then he looked like an idiot because it never came to nothing. I think he was looking for a multi a multi year deal, and then once he signs the multi year deal, then they find out that he's not ready that not ready to play last year. But he'll be should be ready this year. I mean, it'll be a full year after yeah. the ACL. But I mean, I wouldn't. Yeah, no. I mean, I, the, warning, the warning signs are there. I mean, I, honestly, the you know, having him and Dig together would be like a KD and Kyrie and in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, I, yeah. And I, I can't. I, we know what one thing real quick. I, I think the Bills would have learned, and I'm only saying this because he got gets hurt often. Von Miller, it's the same kind of deal to me. Like it's just you're just waiting for him to get hurt. It's just a matter of when and how long. I and if it's good, and year. if it's going to happen at the end of the season or before, you know what I'm trying to say. It's got that feel to it. So fuck yeah. it. I wouldn't want him. I don't know. Just me. We'll see. All right. All right, Mike, I'll be talking to you. Um, are you real fast? Are you going to do – you'll be doing Leafs post game probably on the playoffs on Twitter? Yeah, probably uh, the, the combo will be doing a lot of post games, and we're not doing oh, that. If I'm not covering a game up in Toronto, then we'll be doing a Twitter spaces thing. I'm sure there will be a lot of people listening in because I'm, oh, yeah. the, the passion of Leafs Nation when it comes to the playoffs is uh, – <laughs> volcanic so <laughs> yeah, all right mike well thank you have a happy easter you too thanks See you, mike. Care, mike. Easter, buddy. all right mike Ajello, there he is our guy dude my eyes i What's got my, my eyes been burning for whatever reason burning yeah no i think it's allergy <laughs> stuff my glasses on for a little while i have to step away you're on a commercial anyway no, we're gonna go to a commercial right now we come back i gotta ask you something i got something i didn't even tell you about that i want to ask you about okay so what kinds of fun to talk about yeah, we'll be back in a moment. 